Good afternoon. Thank you for attending today's remembrance of the 70th year anniversary of the sinking of the USS Juno and her crew and the rededication of the USS Juno Memorial to its new location. I am Carl Uchtel, the Port Director, and I will be the Master of Ceremonies for today's remembrance. This is a storyboard of the USS Juno, the Meeker letters, that was prepared by Samantha Kostenko, a fifth grade student at Riverbend Community School here in Juno. It has details about the USS Juno, the ship, but it mostly focuses on pictures of the ship and the letters that were donated by Mary and Ray Testa that were sent from William Meeker Jr., a seaman on the USS Juno, to Winifred Blome, Mary Testa's mother. And it's a very touching storyboard, and it conveys the, uh, her understanding of what the loss of the ship means and the loss of Mr. Meeker and the friendship he had with Mary Testa's mother, Winifred Blome. It's, uh, again, prepared by Samantha Kostenko, a fifth grade student at Riverbend Community School. Hi everyone, I'm Jody DeBryan. I'm the curator of collections at the Juno Douglas City Museum. Um, today we're looking at some items from our USS Juno collection. Um, we have photographs of each of the three ships. This was the first USS Juno that sunk um, in 1942. It's the USS Juno CL-52. Um, the second one is the CL-119. And then the third is the LPD-10. Um, we also have a commemorative plate for the CL-52, the first ship, um, a plaque um, from the third ship, and then a commissioning pendant um, that I can kind of hold up and show you. Um, red, white, and blue commissioning pendant um, for the third ship as well. Um, last week, we received a collection of letters from one of the USS Juno CL-52 sailors who died in the sinking. Um, they were written by William G. Meeker, Jr. He was a second, uh, seaman second class in the United States Navy Reserves. Um, he wrote the letters back to a, uh, a sweetheart of his in New Jersey. Um, they were childhood friends and group just around the corner from each other. Um, so we have a, the collection of letters that Winifred Bohm received from him, as well as photographs of William and Winifred, um, as well as some news clippings um, from that time, um, including one that announces the posthumous Purple Heart Award that he received, um, and the announcement that the ship had sunk and um, local youths were missing in action from the sinking. Um, the letters date from April 19th, 1942, nope, sorry, February 5th, 1942, until uh, November 6th, 1942, about a week before the sinking is when the last letter was sunk. Um, the letters are a great testament to love, friendship, family, honor. Um, they're... They're pretty amazing. Um, we do have a copy of them in our reference collection. If anybody's interested to come and read them, um, you just need to set up an appointment with them. I'm thinking about this. And I want to thank Jim Samard, who uh, 
sort of heard through a secondhand source that he said if you had a good actor read these letters, everyone would be weeping at the end. I'm not putting any pressure on you, but <laughs> <laughs> I heard that and knowing Jim's judgment, I thought, well, I should read these and see. Um, and they're really, really fantastic. So what I want to do is just give you a little bit of context before Brian launches into it. You're going to hear him. He is the voice of Bill Meeker. And who was Bill Meeker? He was a sailor on the USS Juno. He was lost at sea when the ship was sunk in the battle that um, you just heard described. He was from Harrison, New Jersey. We know he was under 21 when he enlisted because his father had to be with him. So he was a very young man. Um, and the letters he wrote, we have about 17 of them that the museum has that he wrote. They started after he joined the service. He um, went to Newport, Rhode Island for training. The ship was actually built after he joined the Navy. This is kind of amazing. We were just talking about this in the other room. The entire life of this ship was less than 12 months from commissioning to being lost at sea. Um, that's, that's astonishing. So he joined the Navy before the ship was even built. Um, went through training and then was deployed onto the ship as presumably being finished or something like that. So there's some letters that were written from the Juno when it was still on the East Coast where it was constructed. And then we have some letters that we hear at the end that were written when she was at sea of the Pacific. Um, the last one was written November 6th um, and the battle was described as November 13th. So they picked up some mail in between in those seven days. So, you know, just, just before. It's, it's, well, it's one of the best, I think. Where you're going to hear the first one and the last one. Um, there's a little incident that you may, if you listen for it, you may hear him sort of obliquely refer to. We know that he was absent without leave from June 28th, <laughs> to, naughty boy, June 28th <laughs> to June 29th for about 20 hours. Um, and apparently he and a buddy tried to get to Harrison and visit his friend Winnie, who he was writing to, and maybe some other buddies. He didn't see her, but um, he did get... He had to get reprimanded, and he had his pay docked $12 a month for three, three months for that little expedition. And shortly after that, it seems that, that they then left for the Pacific. So that may have been why he did that. We don't really know, because he didn't tell us, and we can't ask him. But, but that's really fun. Um, the letters were written by William Meeker to Winifred Blom. They were neighbors. Um, and you'll see the nature of their relationship as, as you hear these letters. But um, I wish we had her responses. And I, I know that my colleague Amy is here. I want to thank her help with this. And your students are going to try and write some of her answers. Um, and that'll be, we're, we have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that actors do whenever you do this kind of thing is try and imagine what, like if you're on a phone call as an actor, you want to know in your head what the person on the other end of the line is saying. So I asked Brian to, and he's, I don't know what he's decided, um, <laughs> but I've asked him to think about what she wrote back and what he's responding to um, as he's worked on these letters. It's really wonderful. Um, Brian Crowder is um, an actor in our company. He's a student at the University of Alaska Southeast. For about 10 years or so, Perseverance in the University of Alaska have had a joint program to have a theater training in the university. So he is a theater minor and an English major, and he's fresh off his triumph as wit in Of Mice and Men. Did you see that? Yeah, it's fantastic. If you didn't see it, Of Mice and Men is about a young man named Wit. <laughs> um, <laughs> my friend just the migrant farm worker <laughs> nearly prevents a tragic accident. Um, yeah, it was really wonderful. And we closed last Sunday at yeah. Anchorage. Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. So um, we've done a little bit of work on these, and I think it's really fun. So I'll start us off. The first letter is um, dated February 1st, 1945. It was written from Newport, Rhode Island, in um, training. Letter number one. Dear Winnie, how are you, Blondie? How are your big brothers making out? And it must have been a surprise, judging by your writing, that is, your statement. Navy life is great. Everything is great. I am in the greatest health I can remember. We have practiced at a firing rifle range, lectured on bayonet fighting, lectured on gases and torpedoes, and gymnastics. Is that spell right? I'm very sorry I didn't write sooner. Then I would have more than one letter to read over and over again. Gee, I almost forgot. It was great to hear from you. I would have written sooner, but I was so very busy the first week. I would get limp just thinking about a nice, comfortable bed. We had a dress parade the first week we were here. It was swell the way all the young cadets marched in perfect steps to the rhythm of the United States Navy Band. It was so stirring that all the fellows march in true Annapolis style. It really was a wonderful sight. How is school treating you? Okay, I hope. How is Sansa Dances making out? I miss dancing a little, 
but we'll have to do without it for a long while. I didn't join up for fun. There's a job to be done. And I'm going to get my two cents in. We've had needles for different ailments, seven to be exact, including a blood test. On the entrance day, we are examined by Navy specialists for eight full hours, including a psychiatrist and an x-ray machine. Boy, when you pass the doctors, you're in perfect health. I'm terribly sorry about the error of spelling your name. I'll see that it never happens again. I am going to write to Anne just as soon as I get to my new address. Winnie, please don't, as much as I want to hear from you, write to me until I know my new address. I will write to you just as often as possible. You sound just like a judge, the truth and nothing but the truth. How is your mom? I send my best to her. I don't need to tell you to take care of yourself, but I know you can. In my books, you're the best. Please, when I write to you in the future, don't think me brazen if I ask for a large picture of you. But with your answer to this letter, you only need send a snapshot. It'll be very much appreciated. Please don't write until you hear from me. I enjoy reading your letters very much. I hope the Indians didn't scalp anyone in school. Until I hear from you, I remain very fond of a very swell young lady, Bill. P.S. Boys, it's snowing up here and cold, too. Please excuse writing. Tell Otto that I did not see Clarity up here, but I'll try and get in touch with him tonight. Letter number four, April 19th, 1942, UAS, USS Juno on the East Coast. Hi, sweetness. Did you ever see an Irishman forget a promise? How are you making out? I'm glad you like my ship. She's not my ship, of course. But for the time being, she's my home, so I say my ship. What's the idea of calling a sailor in the U.S. fleet Sonny, honey? <laughs> I'm glad everyone is fine and that your dad is improving. After what he's been through, you can't blame him for being crabby, as you say. I like skating a bit, but not too much, although I could get to like it. That is, learn to like it much more. It must be that I don't have any chances to go skating. That's perfectly all right, making dates. I wish all the girls were like you. Well, if I'm not home by Mother's Day, I wish you a very happy birthday, and I'll give you a kiss when I get home. If it's possible, two ways. First, getting home. Second, your consent. I'm fresh, huh? Sophie's okay, I guess. She's a sweet kid. But between her and I, them days are gone forever, I guess. How do you get that way? A kiss on every wave? Don't I rate in between every wave, too? Well, Lucky, I guess I sign off now. I hope to be home soon. Remember me to Mom and Dad and Otto. Keep yourself as pretty as you are. And what do you mean by signing quote, as ever, unquote, quote, you will please explain, yes, unquote. Keep your chin up. You look prettiest that way. Bill. P.S. See this X? I want it when I get home. Letter number six, June 21st, 1942, from the USS Juno in New York. Dearest Winnie, oh, what I wouldn't do for one of your kisses? I like it, so here it is, and it's the truth. I got your letter. I was a little confused, but mostly happy, because you didn't forget I was very happy writing it. And just think, I could always be happy if you'd write often. When I was sending the other letter, the one from you must have been on its way. If you remember, I asked you to write nice letters. And as if by a miracle, I got one. Even before the one reached you. I'd only sent it two days. So I guess you hadn't gotten it yet. I'm feeling fine all for a little cold. I was naughty and got my feet wet. So you were thinking of me when you went to Rye Beach? I'm glad a little coldness was no hindrance to your enjoyment. 
You know, Winnie, writing to you seems to bring you more closer to me than ever before. I guess it takes something like a sail for some time to bring a guy to his senses and he realizes what he's missing back home. In my case, I mean you, of course. <laughs> well, honey, I miss you and you miss me. Do you? Honey and Lucky, <laughs> very nice. But I'm afraid I have to give you one for my very own. Have you ever been walking on a cold, calm spring evening when the moon was shimmering bright? Then the stars pop out one by one and flickered all through the sky? Winnie, that's what you remind me of. So from now on, your name will be Moonbeam. I hope you like it. I do a lot. If you don't, that'll be just too bad. Because you have it, and I'll not change it unless I can give you a better one, which will be hard to do. Frankly, Moonbeam sounds young and fresh. That's what you are. You know what kind of fresh I mean. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. You're not giving me very much of a chance, are you, by saying it? To think you would write a letter like that? It's a little beyond my imagination. You'll see, Sugar Pie, just how much you can bet on your imagination. I'm glad your folks are all feeling fine. I'll sign off now. Be a good moonbeam and write often and soon. Make them long letters, too. Give my love to your parents. So long, Moonbeam. Your sailor. There's a break in time here. The next letter we're reading is letter number 14. It's stuck dated October 18th, 1942. Um, so that's about four months after the one you just heard. He's aboard the Juno. They're in the Pacific. And we know that he's received a whole bunch of mail for the first time in quite a few months. So he's answering a lot of different letters that have come from home, including from Winnie. And uh, you can just imagine him looking at all that mail and trying to answer all those things that, that he's finally gotten. And also how angry he is to have heard news from home. So, October 18, 1942, letter number 14. Hi, sweetheart. It really happened. I got mail for the first time since June 28th. Just, ten days, short of four, just four, 10 days short of four months. And open your letter asking me if I forgot your address. I'll never forget your address. How would I? I got it tattooed across my chest. You say you'd like to hear from me as soon as possible? Well, I have before me one letter dated July 14 and July 27th. You ought to have this answer by Christmas anyway. Some of the fellows got cookies from their mom. Sent July 1st. Had to use a chisel to break them. <laughs> Gosh, if I, make such a, if I make a hit with your friends as much as you say my picture did, I'll be doing all right. But there's only one person I really want to make a hit with. Oh, yes, honey. When is your birthday and how old will you be? Or even better, just sit down and write your life's history. And the word is spelled S-P-A-G-E-T-T-I. And I do like it. <laughs> Say, are you throwing hints telling me about your cooking? Can you make blackberry pie? Don't flirt with all the good-looking girls. That's a sweet phrase. Believe me, I would flirt if I could. But it's an old Navy rule. No woman on board. And it's not every day that young women come walking by over some nice big waves. <laughs> what do you mean by saying kisses? All for you, although I know you'd much rather have them from someone else. You have me guessing. Would you be so kind as to tell me whom I would rather have them from? Since you seem to be so chuck full of knowledge. And I would like very much to see plenty of X's at the close of every letter. I'm keeping a good count, and you'll get them all back someday. You have exactly 75 coming to you now. I'm not too inquisitive, although I was glad your bit of cookery turned out so swell. When you were talking about being swell-headed and being a snob, I said to myself, she'd never be like that. She's so sweet and lovely. But if she showed the slightest signs, well, have you ever been spanked by a sailor? 
Where in heaven's name do you get those witty sayings? Nice, though, about the truth in the lamppost. Sweets, what is the L for in your name? Lovable? I just got done writing to mom. I got 23 letters from her all at once. So you can imagine the length of my answers. How are you coming with your skating? I guess you can have the pick of any male partner since you're getting so good. I still can't figure out why I didn't kiss you that night I was at your home. I don't believe you would have resisted, or would you? But then maybe you would have thought me awfully fresh. Oh, heck. There won't be any hesitation next time. In your second letter, you start with, Hello, my sailor. Since I belong to you, it's hello, my darling. Now we belong to each other. Nothing would suit me better than to have you as my angel of mercy, but you can do all the nursing when I get home. Send her a few names, and if she doesn't write to them, I will. Nothing doing. Sweets, if I had my way, you'd only be doing your writing to one sailor. I wouldn't trust one of the wolves on board, even at Pen Point. <laughs> Lonesome? That's a sweet song. Did you, mean it? did you mean it the way I think you did? Why do you almost cry when you hear that? Street of regret. I hope you don't have any regrets. Or have you? <laughs> Dimple on the chin, devil within? Do you think so? Sure, and it's a lot of blarney. There's a little bit of heaven an hour. Yours and mine. Big hearts. So big and true. Doubtful. So you have my picture opposite yours from facing your bed? Well, let me tell you, it's a good thing I can't, a picture can't do any peeking. <laughs> Oops, there must be a little devil in me. Tell me, do you ever get tired of looking at my picture every morning when you wake up? I'll bet you'd be surprised if you got up some morning and found a substitute for the picture. <laughs> Would your face be red? How much do you like the person it represents? You mean to say you would have stayed home from a whole day at the beach just to see me? Well, that makes me feel happy. So you're a regular act up in school, eh? Well, I wish I had a seat next to you. I'd keep tabs on you. And I will not tell the fleet you were asking for them. Or about 50 guys would be knocking at your door when we reach home port again. And drive that idea out of your head about me not wanting you to write anymore. Write and write until your arms fall off. Figuratively, of course. I really can't remember what I wrote on the envelope, unless it was S-M-R-L-H. Sailor mail, rush like heck. <laughs> what kind of results with those words? I'm crazy about you, honey. Say you'll be mine, get. Earl say he thinks he knows you. Winnie, you know where I live. Why don't you stop down to see mom some night? With your mom. Oh yes, that girl in the small picture? Her name, is her name Marge? Earl? Said he knows her slightly. Why is it that all thoughts come to girls when they're stretched out on a bed? Buddy O'Donnell, my best pal, says his girl's the same way. Or maybe you were just a little tired. Twelve pages isn't very much when you have so many things to tell about yourself. Your ways, the things you like best, the way you spend your days and nights all about yourself. Gee, if I'm to go out with you, I'll have to learn to do the things your way and like the things that you like. And in turn, you'll have to put up with all the crazy things about me. Well, sweets, I guess I've written enough. I can send all my love and hope that you save a place in your heart for me. I send my love to your mom and I hope dad is coming along fine. So long for a while, darling. Your sailor, Bill. P.S. Write whenever and as often as you can, sweetheart. Don't forget the address. USS Juno, care of Fleet Post Office, San Francisco, California. Please write airmail. It gets to me week ahead of regular. That card was very inspiring, but there is no other girl. What does SMRLTW mean?
And the last letter we'll read to you is, is the last letter. It's number 17, dated November 6, 1942, from the USS Juno in the Pacific. Hello, honey. Judging by your letter, I must have been the center of conversation. Well, now that you know the good and bad of me, I'm glad you're still on my side. And what may I ask are all my faults, as you put it. And of course, a few of my nicknames. So you've seen my pictures? Well, mighty kind of the folks, eh? Gee, the kid brother must be changing. I never knew him to be talkative. Telling all the tales he should not. Oh well. Frankly, my life's an open book. I'll read it to you some night when the lights are low and we're all wrapped up in each other. And I do mean wrapped up. Romantic, eh? I haven't heard from Mom as yet, but there could only be one verdict, and all in your favor. Mom couldn't help liking poor, innocent little you. Say, that doesn't seem to fit you. You're rich, not poor. Yes, wealthy with beauty and charm. I'm not so sure about the innocent part, and surely you're not little. Say, listen, sister. You have to put up with my faults and nicknames if you want me at all. They go with me. And oh yes, whatever tales my brother mentioned are all in the past. Let's live for the future. And, and what's more, you'll have to put up with my exercises in bed or move out. Incidentally, I just got done doing my daily exercises. Every evening I do them up on deck. You'll be needing a strong man to break you in two whenever you pick a fight with him. How's the cooking coming along? I like my steaks raw with plenty of fresh onions and ketchup. And then after a few puffs on a smelly old pipe, I'll go for a pair of soft slippers, a nice big soft chair, and you. Nice thought. I wonder if it'll ever come true. I wonder. Say, you make bargains with people, eh? Well, from now on, all of them will be with me. I'm not much of a dancer myself. Waltz a little, but not jitterbug. But it's a promise. You teach me to skate, and by the time I get home, you have to teach me to kiss again, let alone dance. So good deed Dotty has done the job once more. <laughs> yes, I caught something falling out of a tree one day. She thanked me, but I'll be darned if she started to follow me around. Gee, I was surprised Ed quit school. I kind of wish he didn't. Bill is having a bit of a wait, isn't he? The, more, the war may be over by the time he gets called. Is the lady upstairs still playing God bodyguard on my behalf? <laughs> Your house won't be a morgue for long. If you went over the job of making up for everyone, that ought to be an easy job for you. Say, I hope you don't object to my smoking. I promise I won't smell up our best set of living room curtains. Sweet, don't you think? Gee, I wish I could spend one Friday night at Holy Cross dancing all night long with you. We hear plenty of recordings on board ship, but most, sometimes I'd rather not hear them for reasons that I guess you can understand. Generally, I mosey up the library and fetch me a good piece of literature. Something like Captain Caution or Benjamin Blake. Or some other sea story. I guess you know by now that I've grown to love the sea. It's something that even a great poet couldn't put to writing. But then, I'd give a month of sea life for one day in the mountains with you. Well, tomorrow, I'm going to services for the first time in a long while. First time I'll be receiving the sacraments in about five months. Confidentially, I wish it was being held at Holy Cross. Well, sweetheart, I guess I've written enough. I hope you have a very joyous Thanksgiving. Give my love to Mom and Dad. And you can pray that the world's troubles will come to a short end so that ours may begin. Winnie, how does my mom look? Is she happy? Please visit her often. Say, honey, how's it send me a couple more pictures of yourself? The ones I have are just about worn out from all the handling, and I've taken all the looks out of them I possibly can. 
Truthfully, they're like new, simply because I treasure them. But I would do with a couple more. Thanks, Precious. Loads of love, yours, Billy. P.S. You owe me well over a hundred kisses now. Do you think I can get them all in one, in one night? I think I can. Tell me your answer. And that's the end of the letter. Thank you. Thank you.